Cougar Nation live here on this Monday night. BYU ranked number 17 in the AP Top 25 poll. 5-0 and on the season. First time that's happened since 2021. It's the eighth time in BYU football history that the Cougars have started 5-0. and Kalani Satake ties Lavelle Edwards for the most 5-0 and starts by a head coach. Three. Isn't that kind of crazy? That, that is that very crazy. Kalani tied Lavelle. Lavelle wow. coached 29 years. Kalani's in only his ninth year, and he's already matched the amount of 5-0 and starts that Lavelle had. Now, granted, Lavelle had a lot of, you know, a lot of great teams at the beginning of schedules, but Kalani did too with the independent schedule. So it's impressive that Kalani has reached this 5-0 and start once again, and it's a great start for this BYU football program. Number 17 in the AP Top 25, a, a bye this week. And then they take on the Arizona Wildcats coming up on October 12th, which will kick off at 2 p.m. Pre-game will start at noon on that Saturday afternoon football at Lavelle Edwards Stadium in the fall. That's going to be quite the sight. Cannot wait for that. But we're taking your phone calls, 801-575-8255. It's sponsored by Central Bank. And let's get out to the phone line. Rob from Kaysville, you want to weigh in on our question about how Jake Retzloff has performed so far. What's your take, Rob? Hey, what's up, guys? I... Uh, I I think Jake's he's got an A so far in my book. I, he's far exceeded my expectations in terms of what he's done so far. I mean, I think last season was, you know, for the most part a mess. Uh, he's had some bright spots, but he's come in and done a lot better than I was expecting. And and you know, he had that he was in a battle for the starting position, and there's just been no question in my mind that they made the right pick. Even with some of the turnovers, Rob, you'd give him an A? Uh, absolutely. Well, you know, he's going to make mistakes, right? Uh, so I, I'll i give him a break on that. I, we're 5-0. <laughs> so uh, I like I'll it. take the mistakes if we're winning. Fair. Thanks for the call, Rob. That's a good point. You're, you're 5-0. and I still think, look, some of these mistakes, they're going to get you l- later in the year. But who's going to get them? The Big 12, I will say, Matt. <laughs> look, I was hyping it up. I thought the Big 12 was going to be loaded this year. and BYU, I still think it's loaded. It's just not yeah. loaded in terms of top-end talent. That's a great point. The best team might be the 15th-ranked team in the country. Right. But the bottom team is probably the... 30th team. In the, yeah. 70th at worst? It's a pretty balanced league. And I mean, anyway, Houston's not any good. Yeah, Houston's terrible. That's that's a guaranteed win. Yeah. That's the only guaranteed so you're, win you're, on the schedule. Yeah. Well, so you're going to get to a bowl game. Which is great, and that exceeds expectations. I, I do find myself struggling with the lens of what Rob just talked about, which is preseason expectations, because I did not have them going to a bowl. That looks inevitable. So if you look at it through that lens, everyone's exceeding expectations, sure. and everyone should be given a high grade. At the same time, I do also look th- through the lens of how high can the ceiling be? Because there is an opportunity. I think you're alluding to that, Mitch. There's an opportunity here to get to Arlington. Oh, the, we don't have to forecast it. It's there now. The expectation, or not the expectation, but the path is there for BYU to go play for the Big 12 Championship. It's there. It's BYU I, is in the thick of it. Right. That's got to be the thought now, is that you're chasing Arlington and going to the trying to go to the Big 12 Championship game. That's now the goal. Now, the first goal was get to six, and I know you still need one more, but you're going to get there. You're going to get that six whether, whenever it comes. But Big 12 Championship is a realistic opportunity now for this team. After getting a win on the road and having that breakthrough, when all the kind of side factors and things that would have said let down spot for BYU, you took care of business. You got a win on the road at Baylor. Who Baylor individually, and I know they had a lot of suspended players. They had some injuries. They didn't even have Campbell Barrington playing. Uh, that was kind of light group. And they were personnel-wise. They still had spots where they gave BYU some struggles. I just I think BYU now, with how this league is playing out, BYU is right there in the hunt for the Big 12 title. When I look through that lens, I do have some concerns about making a run to Arlington based off what we saw against Baylor. The injuries is one thing. I do like the depth, but Connor Pay, that's going to be tough to overcome, depending how long he's out. That yeah. changes the whole dynamic of the offensive line. Then on top of that, there's just too many timely mistakes that let teams back into games, Sure, which team is going to bolt through that door and take you down because you threw a horrible interception in a moment where you had the lead and just punt the football. That's 
what's holding me back from giving Jake an A when when I look at the question of the day. We'll keep taking your calls, 801-575-8255. I want to see more of that Kansas State performance where it was mistake-free and the decisions were good because there was a couple plays, too, where the decisions weren't great. I mean, his overthrow to Darius Lasser, that could have been picked. So it's just these decisions, they're, he's, he's, he's certainly exceeding expectations. There's no doubt. But can you be tighter? Can you be better? No because teams that get to Arlington, they don't just luck into six conference wins and get there. You got to beat people the right way consistently. Well, even in the Kansas State game, Jake had you know three or four passes that were probably not the most accurate. Even go watch that game. Brock Osweiler even was saying you got to you got to hit those wide open targets. I think Jake's just that's kind of who he is a little yeah. bit, and and hopefully he cleans that up. And it's nice that we can comfortably say there's no quarterback debate right anymore. Like there's no conversation about. I think there was still that feeling going before the Kansas State game where fans were still feeling like, I don't know if Jake's the guy. And then you win that Kansas State game, and that cemented it, and then it just continues now with the Baylor game. There shouldn't be any debate, and and there's not, uh, with who the quarterback situation is. So now it's a chance for Jake to really hone in and tighten things up and and take care of business every single week. But I just think, I kind of just expect there's going to be five throws that that put you on the edge of your seat with Jake. But the thing is, he's also going to give you now Five brilliant throws, right. which last year he was not giving you. Now he is. And you just hope that those brilliant five throws outweigh the maybe, uh, you know, nervous, <laughs> nerve-wracking five throws that go, oh, that's a missed opportunity, or oh, that pick. You know, you hopefully those explosive plays can outweigh the, the bad ones. You can text us as well. 57500-8381 says, honestly, I would give him a B plus. It's also what Intern Alley gave Jake a B plus. He's been pretty great on the ground, and his decisions have been pretty good. I'm not sure about some of the reads he's made, but I think he'll be able to improve through the season. Two great points here. Number one, his ability on the ground has been overlooked by a lot of defenses and overlooked by myself. He is adding a nice element on the ground that is helping this offense. We saw it in the Baylor win. That touchdown run was a thing of beauty. If he can continue to be a dual-threat quarterback, that is... I don't want to say makes up for the the bad reads and the mistakes, but it helps you overcome those a little bit because you're adding positive plays with your legs as well as your arm. And then also, he hasn't started that many games. I know he's from junior college and he played a lot there, but in terms of power football, he still hasn't even started double-digit starts. Who would have thought, too, after an 0-4 start to his career, he'd have a winning record before he hits that 10th start? It's pretty point. impressive. Nice Great turnaround point. by Jake, and he is the leading rusher for this team. 34 carries. 156 yards, and that's a byproduct of the injuries and the revolving door at that running back position. But there was good news today. Kalani said they expect to have L.J. Martin against Arizona. They expect to have Sione Imoa against Arizona as well. I mean, I think you and I agree. Those are becoming the top two guys. And L.J. still, like, please stay healthy, you know, because he's building up a little bit of a history now of being an injury-prone guy. Sione Imoa is kind of like, man, we want to unearth what – what else he's got because that Kansas State game, yep. that was the best performance by a running back this season. So I want to see more of that from Sione Imoa, and hopefully that can get unleashed against Arizona. But I, I will give cr- credit to Jake, too, how he's done a nice job, uh, almost like being inspired by the criticisms. It almost fuels him. I, I feel like he thrives on being criticized and just uses that as a positive for his play, and maybe he needs to keep, you know, getting criticisms thrown at him to continue to level up. But uh, he's doing a nice job being the face of BYU football because that's a tough thing to be uh, as, as a starting quarterback at BYU. It's not easy, and he's doing a really good job navigating. I it. think so too. And on the running back note, uh, Hinkley Ropati, he was there in Waco. You yes, saw he was. Him. Suited up. I liked the decision from the staff to not play him unless you needed to. Yeah, because there was an opportunity to rest him up. If look, if you needed him, great. But now. He should be fully healthy. Sione Iamoa healthy. Let's see what we have with LJ. I, I still think that's a question mark, but there's there's proven depth there now. News, traffic, and weather next. Stu from Springville. We'll get to your call next on the other side. Cougar Nation, we're taking your phone calls. 801-575-8255. Sponsored by Central Bank. Mitch Harper, Matt Biamonte. We're live here in Broadcast House in Salt Lake. We'll be more, have more after this.